Welcome to Living Web Farms and our little presentation on planning and maintaining a living roof. Uh, my name is Richard Freudenberger. I'm uh, the energy and resource coordinator here at the farm. I do a lot of uh, projects and long-term planning relating to energy and um, infrastructure and water management and uh, fuels and things like that. So our project basically was um, to incorporate some features into our soldier fly, our black soldier fly facility, which is behind this building. And uh, in addition to the cooling and the tempering and the solar input and the, um, some of the other features of insulation and, and the stuff relating to the flies themselves, uh, we thought it would be nice to actually put a living roof on top, mainly to help temper the uh, temperatures inside, inside the chamber and also to um, make it look a little better because it's really just a shipping container. So, you know, we can figure out ways to make that a little more attractive. And, you know, we, it's not there yet because it's going to take a while, but it's, it's, getting, it's getting there. So Living Web Farms is a, uh, is a nonprofit, basically a nonprofit research farm where we um, develop and test and uh, proceed on with a lot of different, in a lot of different areas, uh, both in soil, uh, growing, in education, in energy now, um, in, uh, we even have this little fabrication shop. That's what's, that's what's here now. This is a, our biochar facility where we make uh, biochar and then inoculate it for use on the fields and for packaging. Um, and we have a lot of other things going on. We, we uh, try to be uh, renewable in our actions as far as energy goes and water goes and be very uh, either energy efficient or, or uh, conservation minded in everything having to do with uh, with the farm and the operations of the farm. What I'm probably going to concentrate on more than anything is just what you really have to be thinking about if you plan to do this or if you're considering doing it. Um, and we will touch on the plantings and whatever, but mainly for the kind of situation we had here, uh, which will replicate what I think most people are going to do. There are two types of, of systems. There's extensive and intensive. And the, the extensive type is the type we're doing. It's a, a much lighter weight, lighter duty, less invasive and less strenuous uh, application of the living roof or green roof design. Uh, the intensive is more like the, old, the older styles or in city in urban environments where you have uh, buildings that already exist or when you're building new buildings that are really engineered and really uh, involved in being an intricate part of the, of the rest of the environment, uh, which you know a lot of people are moving towards that in urban scapes. They are building living or green roofs on top of buildings, either for environmental reasons, for aesthetics, or in restaurant, you know, very common in, in, in restaurants to have herb and culinary use of the, of the roofs up there. But those, those roofs are really more set up for actually walking through, like, just like you would a greenhouse or a, or a garden uh, bed. Uh, they're, they're, they're engineered, they're well-planned, and they're made to be worked with the kind of roofs that we're going to mainly stress tonight are really just, they're up there. Uh, of course, you can walk on them and, and, and access them, but they're not, um, they're really meant to be non, very low maintenance, or in some cases, if you want to, just no maintenance. You do it, and you don't really have to bother with it up, up there. And that's really the, you know, probably the easiest and, and you know, the more attractive one, unless you, unless you are, you know, developing a roof garden for uh, restaurant or herb growing. So what I'm going to do is because where the light is still good and I want to take everybody outside and look at at the structure first and um, and uh, you know so you'll know what I'm talking about and we can still see it. Lisa can uh, get it on on video so we have the light and uh, you know that'll work out uh, fine. We'll do it that way and then we'll come back in and just go through our discussion have our have our uh, questions and whatever. Probably yeah, right up there. Yeah, this might be this might be fine. You didn't, didn't have to do any reinforcing. Well, I'll talk about that. I'll talk about that. You you would think not because um, it's a container, but uh, so basically, this is probably not what a lot of people are going to do. But we we chose for several reasons to use a shipping container because it's modular and because it was uh, quick and, and it was about the right size, we, we decided to use a shipping container for the uh, soldier fly 
reading. So um, that's what we had to work with. The, uh, all this other stuff, that's cooling tubes. From, those are earth sheltered cooling tubes, earth buried cooling tubes. And uh, that's part of the solar chimney section. It's all for what goes on inside there. So it doesn't have anything to do with the roof. The shipping containers are designed to all their weight gets put on the corners and they can hold a tremendous amount of weight. They usually put eight to 10 high full of material. So all the weights on the corners, the, the actual middle part is not all that strong. I mean, it, it's sheet metal and it's heavy sheet metal, but it, it, it wasn't really intended to have any weight on it. Uh, and I, I did some research. The floors are very, very, the floors in these things are very, very strong. Uh, 480 uh, pounds per square foot, which is, you know, a, a deck is 60. So it's 480 or 460 pounds per square foot on the floor. The roof is far less than that. I never really got a good reading, but it's, it was, I wasn't comfortable with it. So we did weld um, tubular steel, two by four inch tubular steel in there before we put the insulation in. And actually, that actually was part of, the, uh, part of the support for the insulation. So uh, every, I think there was one, two, three, four, five, five uh, cross pieces in there. And as it turned out, it's overkill. We didn't really need to do that much, but I just didn't want, uh, I think two of them would have been fine. I really, what I really wanted was in case there was a catastrophic event that it would, it would hit something. It wouldn't just fall down, you know. And that, that sheet metal up there is, is very heavy, so it, it, uh, it, it really was overkill. But the soil, first of all, the soil is a lot lighter than, um, than average soil. And second of all, it's spread out over all that space is eight feet by 20 feet. So that's, you know, that's a lot of um, area for, you know, to be spread out. There's a big difference between putting a lot of weight in, in one place, like, you know, standing in one place and then spreading the same weight out. So basically, yes, this was reinforced, but um, I, I, I did more than we had to. But on the other hand, <clears throat> since it did support the insulation, I needed, I needed a place to have a joint where the insulation butts. It's a rigid insulation, has to butt and seal. So you know, that was perfect. Uh, that's the way I set it up. So um, this is really just a meadow. I mean, we don't, it we never, with the exception of the, of the uh, jigulon, the Chinese herb, which is a medicinal, medicinal herb, which is planted in the, towards the front. And I'm not so sure how that, how that is really doing. It went through a dormant stage and I'm, you know, it was, it was really just a, you know, it was one of the trials. We did one of the experiments. The rest of it is all common. Um, you know, you've got Joe Pie, you've got um, some asters, you've got, uh, um, I, I chose a few uh, native um, sedums, which is, you'll find in any research, the sedum is going to be what people will choose for these roofs because they're um, very low maintenance and, they, and they're very highly tolerant of a ver big variety of conditions. Um, I chose specifically ones that were um, tolerant of drought and also uh, tolerant of just wide ranges of temperature and and seas and uh, drought to moisture. It ha has to be well drained, but uh, other than that, if it's not standing in, in a pool of of water, uh, they'll, they'll be fine. Um, I didn't. I wasn't so concerned with the um, credibility of them. I mean, we're not really supposed to be walking on them, but um, I planted them so you can sort of see where they are and you can and you can wend your way through. There's no main. I really. Don't need to maintain anything up here. This is basically for the purposes of that container. This is a tempering, and I w I'm not going to call it insulation because it's not really insulation, but it's uh, it it slows down the highs and lows, the peaks and the valleys of the temperature changes of the day. And that's really all those flies want is they want to be somewhere between about 45, 50 degrees, n no higher than 100. And two or something like that. And this definitely does that. I mean, it makes, it just keeps them right in that range in addition to the insulation that's, that's inside. Um, the, uh, this, just today I clipped, I did deadheaded a little bit. Some of the, some of the, um, what was that? I guess there was some, there were some tall stalking plants, a couple of trees actually I pulled out of there were some maple or poplar trees that had volunteered. I got them out. I do not, you don't, do not want trees or any deep rooting uh, system at all on the, on the roof. Um, and you know, I, I, there was some clover, some red clover up there. I cut; it had died and sort of fell off. And look, look, you can still sort of see some of it around there. But uh, uh, you know, I just clipped that around there, just on the outside. I didn't really have to get up, and I did some in the front here. But 
if we don't want that tall stuff, just don't put it in there. I mean, that's all. We just, mo most of the time, the idea is to keep it, you know, keep it fairly low. I really wouldn't want anything more than three feet up there if we can help it. Um, you can see we've got some other stuff, but uh, one of the reasons is that's a solar chimney. The sun goes like that, and that needs the sun. Once the, the heat gets into that chimney, there's a tube in there. The heat goes into that black box and then doesn't leave, and that tube, the only place the air can move then is up and out, which it comes out through that rotary in the top, and uh, that in turn sucks the cool air that's in the underground here through those tubes. So I don't want that blocked. Um, in, the, in the winter, it's not so much of a problem, but in the summer, in the winter, it wouldn't be a problem anyway because this, this is all going to die down. But in the summer, if it gets too high, I'll have to, I have to clip around there because I, uh, I mean, it's obviously two-thirds of it is exposed, but I want all of it right down to the, pretty much close to the base. I want that all available to the sun. Um, so essentially, that's it. I mean, we, you can see what, and I, you know, I didn't really finish this because actually I bought six inch the, the container has metal all around there's a there's a rib there's a i don't know what you call it a shield or it's actually a structural part all a band all the way around it and i we welded six inches of sheet metal or a heavy metal around the whole thing to, to contain the earth and when you're welding of course you can't just weld it right to the top so i had this we had to have an inch or so facing on on the band so there'd be some support so basically we have really about five inches, five and a half inches of soil capability, but I, I didn't fill it right to the top. So we've really only got about four, depending on where you are in that, in that matrix up there, four to five inches of soil, which is very, very typical. The, the only reason I didn't put a 12 inch wall up there is because they didn't have a 12 inch wall when it, we were ready to weld. Uh, he said it would take three days to get, I, and I should have planned around that, but uh, I thought, you know, there's no point in putting too much weight in the roof and there's no point in making it higher than it needs to be and putting more soil than it needs to be. So, um, you know, I live with a, with, a, with a four to five inch depth, very common. And um, I, I wanted to give it a year or so to make sure that that was going to be sufficient because if it wasn't, I was going to flip that rubber back and we'd weld another collar around there and then, and then drag it up and glue it so it would be all right. But, I don't think there's any need to, so we're going to trim. I'll trim this down and put a little cap around the around the top of it, so it'll look a little better. But I mean, it doesn't really matter. So what's so what's there basically is a what you see that shiny substance is a, is a, a EPDM rubber. It's a special rubber, continuous rubber mat that's used in roofing and in uh, a lot of things. I mean, just a lot of like tanks and containers, and uh, it's a very inexpensive way of making a uh, a big tank if you want to hold. Uh, you know, 1,000 gallons or 500 gallons, instead of buying, you know, a $2,500 tank, you can just get some of that, which is probably about $200, and just build a little plywood box and line it, and it, it, would, it works. So what's in there really is just an EPDM rubber liner, and then there's a drainage mat, and I'm going to show you all this stuff inside. And then there's, uh, there's a fil filter fabric, which is important for the drainage, so we don't clog up the uh, drain tubes. Um, and I'll show you all this. Uh, uh, samples of it inside and maybe a you know, better vision of what's going on uh, in there. But again, this is a meadow. I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, it could be, sedum is going to be a key element of it, native grasses, any of the clovers you like, things like that. I'm just, I, I tend to want to keep them below three feet, but if you wanted them to, you know, droop over the edges, that's, that's great. What, I, what we haven't done yet and just really starting to look at is uh, the, the Chinese herb was, was going to be part of that um, system, but I want to try to get some vines, some hanging vines, so we have um, the ability to shield the out the red part of the container, the metal, because that can get hot with the that'll that'll shield immediately shield the uh, metal from getting the heat, which we, is what we want. In the winter, of course, it dies back, so we will get the heat, which is also what we want in the winter. Uh, and and what you see there, we put in ahead of time that that silver pipe that goes all the way around the thing that's a watering that's a water curtain so that not only does that in an emergency situation if those if that temperature in there said it was getting over 100 degrees that goes on and showers the side of the of the container with water and it evaporates and then uh, it cools the building down immediately we don't keep it on it's it's, a, it's brief it's like 10 5 10 minutes uh, that also will water 
any of the leaves of the vines if they need it. The, so far, and this has gone, you know, these plantings have gone from, you know, almost like n looking like they're near death on a drought situation to being, have, having, you know, more water than they need. And the roof has, I mean, I don't think it looks all that bad right, right now, really have not tended or planted. A little bit of cutting and that's it. They were not tended in any way. I mean, it's just, that's it. So uh, um, as long as we're draining that water, uh, which we'll, I'll show you on the way out, we, uh, we're all, you know, we're in good shape. So let's walk down that way again and I will, um, and then we'll, we'll come up this grass path again and I'll show you a little more about the drainage part. We're gonna go here. See all this kind of stuff. You can just see it. You know, we got we've got some drapings here that we could. You know, I mean, I, I will research and collaborate with people who know more about the vines than I do, and just get. We'll probably pick some kind of a. I don't know what it would be. And we were talking about grapes. We were talking about a lot of things. But you know, something that we could drip down. Not so much here on these doors because we got to open them out and close them. But around everything else. Of course, this south side is totally different than the north side. The north side is pretty uh, protected. But as far as drainage goes. You can see the, the little six inch wall that was welded onto the frame of the container, the, the black part. And then this is all simple, big box, you know, plumbing supply, Home Depot, Lowe's, all have this kind of thing. It's just drilling a hole, drilling a hole in the, in the um, whatever you choose to put up as a, as a wall or a, or a containment barrier. Um, and these threaded fittings, they're called bulkheads. They just go through, you know, the, it gets put in from the backside and then tightened from the front and it's a two inch pipe and then there's what they call a transition fitting which is uh, two to three inches and then we have a three inch drain and just conveniently I put them right into the regular gutter supply which actually gets back all this is harvested from the roof and contributes to the uh, permaculture design that we have going on here which we're actually going to have a class on in the next two weeks or so. Um, so any, any of the runoff from the meadows, from the ponds and everything, all, it's all tied in. So all the water from here goes down here and gets delivered to the main pond down uh, the, the, when you came in, you saw it. Um, the reason I went from two to three, I couldn't go more than, I couldn't drill big three inch holes in, the, in there in the pipe because I didn't, or in the wall because I didn't have enough clearance. So we went from two is at, totally adequate, but just went to three because I didn't want any clogging uh, if it clogs, if it does clog at the end, I can clean it out from the end, but I can't clean it out easily from, you know, I can't get up. I don't want to get up there and shove bottle brushes down there or whatever. So um, that's why I did that. And all this is very uh, easily dismantled. I mean, just, we just need a ladder. Lift, they're, they're not bolted or anything. You just lift it up, not glued. They just twist them out and you can clean them if you have to. So that, you know, whether this is what you might do on your roof, I, you know, I don't know, but this is how to handle this is one way of handling it, and there's an image in, in the PowerPoint that does have some other ways of doing it. So, yeah. But drainage is, is very important because you do not want, it's not just the plantings, it's not just the moisture in the soil and the, and the, high, moisture, the high moisture content that might kill the plants or, or uh, force you to select ones you might not want, but it's um, the fact that loading on the roof is, uh, the soil can actually double its weight if it's not drained. So you don't really, I mean, you can build for that, but I mean, do you want to spend that kind of money on engineering and, and materials just because you don't feel like draining it? I mean, that's, you know, that's not, we're, we're trying to keep it as low maintenance as possible and of course safe. So we'll go inside now and then we'll just go through the rest of it uh, inside and uh, discuss all the things that uh, sort of step by step and what to think about and disadvantages of doing this to, you know, be honest with you about anything like that. So we'll, you know, we'll just do that inside. Okay, so I guess I'll, I guess I should do a little survey. How many people here are, or maybe we just w go around and since there's not so many people here, we can find out what, uh, why you're here, if you actually have a project you have in mind or you're just curious about the whole thing or you're trying to estimate whether it's worth it to look into it or whatever. So I'll just start. Well, I'm, I'm in the future I'm planning on building a house and uh, I'd like to incorporate that. Yeah. Okay. A house, building a house, and maybe like to incorporate that. How about you? 
Uh, I don't have any plans for one imminently, but I did have one on a chicken coop a few years back. But it wasn't terribly successful, so I, and I just kind of winged it. I threw some dirt on some rubber, yeah. and uh, I think it's probably a little bit shallow and, and oriented the wrong way, so it tended to dry out a little more. Right. Than, uh, yeah. yeah what, what kind of roof was that? Uh, it was a living roof on a chicken coop. Oh, chicken coop. That's what I was going to say. It was a structure, like a like an outbuilding. Okay. How about you? Uh, I'm building a little house in Haywood County, okay. and the house is kind of set. But I'm planning another couple structures in the next few months, okay. so smaller things, workshops, yeah. and stuff. Okay, great. That's, yeah, that's perfect application. What about you guys? Um, yeah, I mean, eventually building a house. Yeah. But for now, I'll probably just do it on the chicken coop. Um, well, that's the perfect way to start. Yeah. I mean, right. Anything out sheds, outbuildings, uh, gazebos, you know, anything like that that are that are uh, non-occupant. Um, I mean, at least it's the, it's the least expensive way to go. You don't have to be as concerned about structural, uh, you know, problems. How about you? Um, I'll be moving back to Florida, South Florida, where I'm from. So i um, not sure how, you know, the plants might transfer. But uh, I'm mostly thinking of on top of a carport, actually. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, that would be, that'd be perfect. Well, that's great. Now, one of the things, this, as I said, this is... Um, this is uh, geared more towards the extensive, you know, the, le the least uh, input or the m minimal input or the moderate input um, approach. So once you start talking about a residence, you know, where you're actually going to be sleeping inside and living inside and stuff, it changes the picture. I mean, you really need to get engineering uh, approval on that uh, if you're going to be, I mean, legal, I should say, not just legally, but um, just from common sense. I mean, it... it uh, because if, there's, if you do not drain the water properly, or if the soil is too heavy, or if um, your structure is not um, adequately supported, there you know, obviously could be issues of, of collapse, and you, 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 know, you don't want that. Uh, as opposed to having a chicken coop or an outside building, uh, especially a smaller surface where you're not going to have like a 36 by, you know, by, by 28 roof. I mean, you're talking about 12 by 16 or whatever, um, much much more easily controlled and uh, and managed and and designed there's really you know very little that's that's not in the realm of anything that difficult <laughs>